look at uh, our message for the day, the Will Clayton Church of Christ. This is January 27, 2019, part two and the final part. Fear prevents us from being great in life. Fear prevents us from being great in life. And we're going to pick right up where we left off, starting with the three points we want to make. You cannot use the excuse, the people will reject me. One thing I want to emphasize is people always look for encouragement from other people. While that is good, that is not the it of life. What you want to know is, are you approved of by God? Now, I'll show you how you know if you're approved of by God. Look at, if you will, 2 Timothy chapter 2. That's how you know. Here goes your cheering section. You don't need to look no further. Don't need no amen. Don't need no great jobs. It's nice to hear, but it's not necessary. 2 Timothy 2.15. Study to show thyself approved unto God. Now, listen to this up. Show thyself approved unto God. The only thing that that will work with the audience is if they love God, too. That's the only way that works. They kill the prophets. The law said they kill the prophets. It's the only way it works is if the audience agrees. So, you don't look for the audience. This is what you look for. Has God approved of you? How do you know? Are you reading your answers from the Bible in the right ear? Man, that's so simple. It looks like, why do people don't, why people don't do that? Because they're not with God. Or they haven't studied. They work when they needed not to be ashamed. So you don't have to be ashamed. So when are you ashamed? You are ashamed if you're not approved of God. You are ashamed if the audience loves you. If they run behind you, if they lift you up on a chair, you're still ashamed if you're saying the wrong thing. You are ashamed if you have 10 million members sitting in front of you and listen to you around the world. You got to catch 10 helicopters to preach that day. You are still ashamed if what you're saying is not approved unto God. That's when you're ashamed. Not, not whether people approve you saying, hey man, a great job, oh, we love this guy, the brethren love him. That's really irrelevant statements. It doesn't even matter. The key is, is are you approved unto God? Rightly divine the word of truth. So two areas. When you study, you should be able to rightly divine the word of truth. That tells you everything. That's how you know you're approved unto God. If you don't know how to rightly divide, then God says, okay, no, I'm not approving you in this area here. Therefore, you're not balance properly and therefore you're like Nebuchadnezzar's son at the judgment you'll be waiting it'll say he's out of balance I can't save him second point you cannot use I lack physical power whether it's money speech uh, good looks nice clothes uh, nice house uh, whatever it is you feel you lack you can't use that you cannot use that physical you cannot use the thought you know but my wife and a lot of brethren will say that. You can talk to us, hey brother, we do this. Yeah, but my wife, okay. Let me tell you something. This is how you know a brother's not qualified. After he says, but my wife, and you say, well, what situation with her? Well, brother, I can't get into it. Well, what is it, brother? Because we can help you with it. If she has an issue, we can develop her and help her grow. Well, you know, brother, no, no man can speak to her. He just told you I'm not qualified because he can't even lead his wife. Did y'all hear what I just said? Let that... Simmer like the barbecue pit. Let it simmer. See, because your job as a male when you come out the womb is if you attach yourself to a woman, you're to lead her. It doesn't matter whether she likes it or not. It's irrelevant. Because Gomer did not like Hosea telling her what to do. She left him. He went and got her back. I'm talking about this one was a prostitute. We know that's a grievous sin. What we're saying is God said Israel didn't like me. That's not a criterion. Moses can't use that. The poor don't want me cutting the flesh. It's irrelevant. She gives him a hard time. It's irrelevant. God doesn't accept that. And you can't accept it either. So that's how you understand that portion. He says, you know what, my kids. Now, not about your kids. Let's get them in line. See, this is how you know you approve of God. If you're a true gospel evangelist, that's how you're going to respond. If you don't want leaders, you won't say that. Because of two reasons. Either you don't want them because you know you can't develop them. Because yeah, you're going to be developing. Yes, you are. Or you don't want them because you don't want to develop them. Because they may be a problem for you. So if brethren turn the pointer to who's the problem in the congregation that has no leadership at all, 
You already know where it's at. Because God told you where the problem is at. Third, you cannot use, I have seen, you cannot use, well, I used to do this. I, I, I have a felony. Uh, you know, I killed somebody. Paul. Point to Paul. Okay, Paul. That's how you do. But brother, I don't think the people receive me. Go back to number one. It's not about whether people receive you or not. We'll teach them how to receive you. See, that's how it's done, brethren. You're going to see that in little church. You're going to see it in big church. You're going to see sin. And you won't see that mentality in little churches. And it doesn't matter about the size. It matters about the what's coming out the mouth. And that's what you and I are going to have to accept. Now, let's move forward. Gideon, he's a good subject to look at. Let's look at Gideon, chapter 6 of Judges. Gideon. Real life examples, we don't have to point to, I had an uncle, I had a cousin. No, we're going to the book, because this is book, chapter, and the verse. So, this is how you take brethren excuses away from rising up, doing what they're supposed to do, and telling them how to develop. And one thing I want to point out, the blessing of, is this is a congregation that you can develop in. And I, that's no credit to me. That's no credit to you. That's a credit to God. Who is in us. And this is a congregation. Where you can come up. And you can say. Man I've never stood before people in my life. Not even in the secular world. And we'll show you. This is a congregation. All you have to do is love the Lord. And study. And we will guide. You can develop here. I have been at congregations. Where you could have been Jesus. And not got anywhere near the pulpit. I've seen it. Not letting you up there. The more you. All right, the less you're getting on. I'm not talking about because I wanted to get up. I'm not talking about that. I did get up. It wasn't about that. It's about others were not alive. So the idea is that that's what the problem is. So when you don't see that nucleus developing, that men, that center of Christ being there, where the power is from the Lord, expressing men rise up and empowering them to do so, taking away excuses, giving them the strength they need to accomplish what they need to do, and you had the wrong work. That's where it's at. And whether you're a woman or a man, you need to encourage, brethren. You don't have to change. You don't have to do different than this. This is not going to get us in the gate. Now, Judges chapter 6. Uh, let's look at verse number 7. And it came to pass when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord because of the Midianites. The Midianites were beating them down. The Lord had turned them over to the Midianites because they had become sinful. Verse 8. The Lord sent a prophet unto the children of Israel, which said unto them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt. And brought you forth out of the house of bondage. So the Lord says, this is how you got here. He says, and I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians. Out of the hand of all that oppressed you. And drave them out from before you. And gave you their land. And I said unto you, I am the Lord your God. Fear not the gods of the Amorites. In whose land you dwell. But you have not obeyed my voice. And there came an angel of the Lord. And sat under an oak. Which was in Ophrah, that pertained unto Joash, the Abiezrite, and his son Gideon, threshed wheat by the wine press to hide from the midnight. So he's threshing wheat. He's getting the wheat off the stalk to put it aside so they can eat. He got hot because the midnight are beating them down and taking their food. So that's what he's doing. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of battle. So the angels walks up. That's just like somebody coming up to you as a, as a man and telling you in the church, you're a man, and saying, uh, hey, hey, man of God, how you doing, brother? We are going to get ready. Get up there and, 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 and tell us about Jesus. It's the same thing. There's not going to be no angel. This is the angel, the messenger. Revelations, chapter 2, that angel is a human being. The angel of the church of Ephesus is a human being. A male teacher. Who the letter comes to and say, now look here, tell him say this to the people. He didn't say if they want to hear him. Say it. So, let's see what happens. And Gideon said unto him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us. Now notice, he says, O oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us. Okay. He's calling him ruler, but there's a ruler over him. He says, why then is all this befallen us? And where? Be all his miracles which our fathers told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us to the hands of the Midianites. Okay, now see, now you got two problems. Gideon is scary, and he don't know what he's talking about. So for you who are fearful, and you know you don't know the Bible, you Gideon. Because 
It's already been said. Y'all are sinning. That's why you in this fix. That's why you hiding by the tree, threshing wheat, hoping nobody will come and beat you down and take your wheat from the Midianite. So he doesn't know what he's talking about. He wants miracles to come out. Why should that be a miracle? Have, have y'all been acting right? Mm -hmm. See, Isaiah was straight up. Man, I got a nasty mouth. And the people I hang with got a nasty mouth. We sinners. So he's, he's trying to know what's going on. Man, please. You have to understand. Own up to the fact. Is that if you have any error. And things are going bad for you. We may have to point out. Well, you know, you've done this. And thus and such. And this is the repercussion of. We still work with you. Hang in there. We're going to show you. See, see, when you're a leader, you lead people. When they went to lead the people out of Sodom and Gomorrah, the, the hope is Lot will get a move on. Lot doesn't know what to say to them. Lot doesn't know it's time to get out. They got to grab him by the hand and pull him. Then he want to go to a specific city. He didn't even know it was time to leave. And they tell him, okay, this is the one you pick, go. Because we can't do nothing until you get out of it. They're instructing him, you don't go to a brother and he instructs you. My brother, you know, people say, you know, we need a class to teach. I'm teaching you now. I'm teaching you now. Even as a woman, you don't go to a brother and ask him. In the sense of when he starts giving it to you, you know, do you know what to know? He needs to tell him, brother, you know, the brothers can help you. They can teach you. I've seen them. I've seen guys come up that were scared to talk. And they're preaching gospel all over now. They can help you. You're supposed to be guiding and pulling. We got some other sisters too. Yeah. See, you might have thought you were going to get left out. That you could come in and sit down and relax. And say, I'm, not, I'm glad I'm not a man. Because it's a burden to be a man. It's a burden on the women too. I'm going to prove to you. It's the same burden on you. You just can't go with the same aggressive mentality. You have to go passively and behind the scene. It's still on you too. You don't get you, you don't get a pass card. See, you're gonna get heaven. You don't get no pass card. God gonna let the women in heaven, then the women gotta work down their heart. In addition to just teaching sisters. Yes, 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 yes. Praise God for his wisdom and knowledge. Okay, now, so Gideon doesn't understand all what's going on. So the angel doesn't get into all that with him. Verse 14. And the Lord, did you see that? And the Lord, and the Lord. Now, this is a moment to teach saints. When an angel of the Lord comes, he is representing the Lord, and he is as the Lord is there. Because the Bible didn't say, and the angel looked at him, and the Lord looked upon him, and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of many nights. Have not I sent thee? What does that mean? Go in this thy might. I'm your strength, man. I just authorized you. I just empowered you. This is your might. If I didn't want you, I wouldn't have gave you this courage. I would have told you, yeah, you're right. You're scary. Better keep threshing wheat before they beat you down. Scary little wimp. He didn't say that to him. Go in this guy's might. Yeah, you are weak, but I'm coming to strengthen you. I'm telling you, I just authorized you. Go. You had the power to go up to the brother and say, why don't we have the elders, brother? We've talked about this for a long time. My brother and I, they're qualified, brother. They're qualified, brother. And you see, but you, don't, you know why I don't want to do that? Because we, we know it might involve us as participants. We might be the participants. That's going to be the problem, isn't it? We ha I didn't know it was going to be me involved with the work. I thought I was just an encourager. That's Barnabas. Barnabas was involved with the work too. And an encourager. You know what happens with stepping forward? Accountability is the first thing on the line. If a bus has a wreck, guess who they go to first? Where's the driver? Even if he slumped over the seat dead, they're going to investigate what happened. Well, I saw him looking at a magazine and he, he trying to tell, okay, he's dead now. But it's, a it's a magazine right by his leg. It must be true. And it's open face. Go on them first. They're not going to numb the people. Who was driving the bus? So when you step forward to lead, you already know accountability is there. That's scary. Because when something goes down, they're going to ask, whose job was this? And then responsibility, nah. Question, why didn't you do it? See, that's powerful. That's why a lot of L, uh, uh, evangelists don't like ordaining other leaders because they know they're going to be asked, you know, you know, this brother did this. Was he taught the right way? You got to say, well, yeah. See, 
You know what I mean? Don't be questioning me. I'm not responsible for another man. Yeah, but I'm not saying you were just asked, was he taught that way? Questions might come. You have review thoughts with the people you constantly kind of brush upon. I remember we were talking about elders and things uh, uh, a couple of years ago. And somebody had kept at me, why are we talking about this? I said, because we have to keep it before the people while it's here and others will be needed. That's others needed. Now, isn't that, brethren? Mm-hmm. Now, do you see why we were talking about it? Because you don't know if you're going to be here in the morning, do you? So we have to continually talk about it. And that's why you don't see them, any leaders other than an evangelist. He's always there. Even, even when there's no evangelist, they still seem to function. Nobody's an evangelist. And that's something, nobody's an evangelist, and then you're calling out for evangelists to come. What happens to all that lead us now? Does any man know the gospel? So what does the statement say? Have not I sent thee? I sent you. That's the might. And I've authorized you. Go. No. That's what I want you to go in. I authorize you, so go. All the people to pick. You know how many people there are in Israel? People everywhere. And now, you have a situation to where they fall into the hands of the enemy. Watch this, verse 15. And he said, Oh my Lord, well, what should I save Israel? Oh, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. What is that? Physical. We said physical can't use it. But Gideon somehow thinks he can use it. It's not going to be allowed. And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee. That's, that's all the riches you need. That's all the honor you need. That's all the might you need. And thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. You're going to beat them like if it was just hitting one guy. We know the rest of the story. God takes his army, reduces it down twice, leaves him with 300. He is scared, hitting, in a sense, hitting his knees together, smoting, as was Nebuchadnezzar's son. But nevertheless, God works with him. He comes up with a plan on how to scare them up. I want to take a minute right here. Brethren, let me share something with you. God is not going to do this for you. You know that, right? And He's not going to do this for any church. He gives you the might. You have to study and say, okay, how will we do this? How will we carry this? And it needs to fall out the scripture. So don't act like we just come here and Lord and Lord, He's already gained a victory. It's already, man, you will get defeated. The devil will step on you like an ant. Because you are involved. Yeah, you've got to interact. And there'll be no voice. He's not even telling him what to do. And he doesn't even tell him what to do when it gets started. He doesn't tell him about the battle plan. This guy's threshing wheat. He's not a soldier. He's not a general. Because God has empowered him. His mind begins to think like what well, he starts to figure out what we should do. He starts to instruct people. You get around here. You hold this light. Hit this thing. When they hit, they're not going to know what to do. And boom, the Lord sends confusion among the Midianites. You have to be involved. You have to have a voice, a thought, whether it's the right thought or not. You have to start thinking, say, okay, well, can we do this? No, nah, can't do that. That's, that's going to violate. You are involved. You have to show up and participate. It's not going to be the Lord just doing it and you just float two inches off the ground through the air and it, it's all Him. No, you're involved. See, that's why our churches fail. That's why you see. People with 200 plus have been there. No leader, no one but one guy, an evangelist. And some makeshift leadership up. Something they made up. Because the individual does not realize it should look in the Bible and see, okay, this is us right here. Uh, Let's make this move here and we will be able to gain the victory. See, when you start talking about the victory, it's already won. Now, let me share something with you. You need to understand that scripture. You haven't won anything yet. Or else you would be in paradise. Do you realize you have not won? The Bible says he's an overcoming. Jesus already overcame. So why would it say that if, 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 it, if it's here, he's overcome? He's in heaven at the right hand of God. What's I got to do with me? I have not overcome yet. I have overcome to this point in battle. But just let me keep living and slip later and I'm out. That's what you have to understand. You must overcome those fears. You must overcome those excuses. What position you are? Do people like you or not? Overcome that and participate. And then the law will say, 
I've made you great. That's what it's about. You say, well, you know, everybody want to be great. <laughs> All right, now listen. In the spiritual world, you want to be great. Because that's how you slide in the hell. See, you stay mediocre, so close to the edge, you just slip, and you're gone. Because the devil, at any time, will just pick you and say, I'm fixing to come for you. <laughs> I just don't like you. I just don't like you. You can't stop him. God's not going to stop him. And if you aren't prepared for the battle, Joel's three friends were not prepared for counsel. They loved him. The way he just thought of me. They loved him. They broke down and cried. They said, man, it's my boy, man. You know, can't talk. Just look at him for several days. And were not prepared to give the answer. The young guy, Elihu, he's prepared. He was disrespected. We could talk about Elihu as gain of it, but, but, but this is different. He came out the gate on time. He wasn't like Moses. We don't have a story of him. Elihu says, your friends, neither you know what you're talking about. The Holy Ghost narrates and says, Job didn't even pay attention to him. You see how disrespectful he was? You know, say, you know what the law said? Perfect, not right? Yeah, but he, he's not wise in every move. The law never said, Perfect, not right. He maketh no mistake. He sinneth not. See, no, see, no. Don't mistake perfection to be sinless. Because it is disrespectful for that guy to be sitting there even caring about your nasty, raggedy flesh falling off your skinny, bony body. A fat body, whatever it was, however his body started out, juicy body, and your flesh is falling off. That boy don't have to be there. He's a youngster. He could be doing whatever he wants. And he's there, and you're not even acknowledging him. Go back and look at it. You're not even acknowledging him. Neither you or your friends have the answer. And that's why Paul writes to Timothy Don't let them despise thy youth. What does that mean? Don't let them despise thy youth. You know what that means for Timothy? When he starts hearing, Timothy, we love you, you know, but, but you know, you're a young guy, that's some things that you don't know. You're supposed to go when they through, you're finished. Okay, brother, my age have nothing to do with that, so I wish you'd quit doing that. That's a rebuke. Yeah. Don't let them despise. See, what did you do? Don't let them. He didn't say, don't let it affect you. Don't let them. That means you got to tell them, no, don't do that, brother. If we got some other guys, they might can't take it like me, they'll leave. So, you know, that needs to stop. In love, I'm saying that. You know, age don't mean anything, no matter whether my dad was a... Like, well, see, your dad wasn't a member of the church. No, he was a Greek. And we're just saying, Timothy, some of us had fathers and grandfathers. Well, that don't have nothing to do with it, bro, because I can't control my dad's belief. See, that's what you stop in addition to teaching truth. You have an awesome task before you of saving ratchet, ragged souls, whether they're old or young. That's the job. Open them out and speak. Because they have no authority to despise you. Now, that's Gideon. Let's move forward. Okay, let's look at another individual here. Uh, so we realize Gideon's plan and work. That's time for the sisters. Look at Esther chapter 4. It's time for the sisters now. Can the sisters just come in and just pray? And God is good and great. Oh, that the men be lifted up. What about the sisters? You got to get involved with it too. Got to get involved with it too. See, if you have been taught anywhere on the earth at any time that you don't have authority and the right time to change your heart, whoever taught you that, pray for them because that was a lousy lesson. Burn that one. Esther chapter 4. When Mordecai perceived all that was done, Mordecai rent his clothes. So understand that there has been a decree passed out that everybody we're going to pile you with funds to kill the Jews. A raggedy nation in our way. It shouldn't even be in our land. He rips his clothes and put on sackcloth with ashes. And went out unto the midst of the city and cried with a loud voice and a bitter cry. And came even before the king's gate. For none might enter into the king's gate called with sackcloth. Now see, listen. It's like when the man Nehemiah comes before the king and the queen. He's sad. They don't like that. They say, man, what's that you sad? Are you sick? You know, there's nothing but sorrow or heart. Kings don't want you to bring their food. Here you go. It's good. Face hanging down. And this king don't like nobody with sackcloth on showing mourning. Just like as if you say, okay, lady wearing all black. And she has her face covered. Some people do that with a veil. Sometime back in the day, you used to do that even in America. It's kind of sad. Don't come around the, the, don't come around the male's house like that. 
because they, they, will, they will handle you. So that's what he's saying. Don't come around with sackcloth on, which is cloth, sack, uh, a black cloth showing mourning. He's hollering to, making noise. So Esther's concerned now. And in every province, will serve the king's commandment and his decree came. There was a great mourning among the Jews and fasting and weeping and wailing and many lay in sackcloth and ashes. So Esther's maids and her chamberlains came and told her. Then was the queen exceedingly grieved. And she sent Ramah to cold Mordecai and to take away his sackcloth from him, but he received none. So she said, you know what? Oh man, you know, it's my uncle. He raised me like my daddy. So my mom and daddy did. Okay, so send him some clothes. Tell him, please. The queen said, take this off. You know, your niece said, take this off. She like a daughter. You. He said, I don't want that. I want it to be known. Oh, oh, oh. Sad. Black clothes. Nasty. All around the king gate. You want to die? She know people die doing this. You're not allowed to do this. Then that's a call for her task. One of the king's chamberlain, whom he had appointed to attend upon her. And gave him a commandment to Mordecai to know what it was and why it was. She said, what's going on? Why are you like this? I know you're not going to stop. I know you. I know how you are. Some of you know your fathers. No, I know. Now you better go tell him. He's not going to do it. I'm telling you. Let's find out because he's not going to do it. You know, he's not going to act right until we find out what's up. So her task went forth to Mordecai to the street, which was before the king's gate. And Mordecai told him of all that had happened unto him and of the sum of the money that Haman had promised to pay to the king's treasurers for the Jews to destroy them. And he gave him the copy of the writing of the decree validating it, that was given at Shushan which is the palace to destroy them. To show it unto Esther and to declare it unto her and charge her that she should go in unto the king to make supplication unto him and to make request before him for people. And the tax came and told Esther the words of Mordecai. And Esther spake unto her tax and gave him commandment unto Mordecai. All the king's servants and the people in the king's province do know that whatsoever, whether man or woman, shall come unto the king into the inner court who is not called. That is one law of his to put him to death. Except such to whom the king shall hold out the golden scepter that he may live. Have I not been called to come in to the king these 30 days. I've not been called. So she said, look, look, tell Mordecai, I know, I know what's going on. Yeah, I know it's bad. They're trying to kill us. I got it. But look, man, you go to the king gate. You know, already parading around there with that black cloth on showing out hollering. And that, you know, mad and sorrowful. But if you go to the king's court without being told, you die. They don't ask. See, it's, it's, everybody knows it from the least to the greatest. That's somebody say, don't go here, son. You go in there, they kill you. You know, you go out there, you go in the gate. There's no question that. Spill, foof, you drop, ask questions later. That's how the king gets to live. Except if he can spot you, go to something, you can come on. But he say, you know, hey, look, look here. I haven't been called in 30 days. I'm not going up there. He might not, he might not feel like Bob. Maybe he can't see me or something. They just drop you, man. You die. No questions asked. Amen. And they told Mordecai Esther's word. Then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther. Think not with thyself. That thou shalt escape in the king's house. More than I do is he knows. Look. Somebody gonna come in and say. Man you gotta. Your gal is a Jew. I'm going like to the street. Regular talk. Man your girl is a Jew. You the king. See now remember something now. Kings don't get to override their own law. Amen. See once you set that out. You gotta be careful. See, you may think it was like that. No. See, Rome had a senate. Other nations had other rulers with you. That's how Daniel got in the lines then. Set the king up. Once he set up, he realized he had dropped the ball. He could go, no, no, we have a court. We're gonna discuss this because I was set up. No, man, then you don't know how to run your kingdom. They killed kings and took over. As always, a group didn't like you. This guy likes his job. Cushy job, drinking all the gold cups, eating nice food, eating food you can't even hardly get your hands on. He's eating it regularly. And so, he doesn't want to lose this cushy, great job. So, you have to understand, if they come and say, your girl is a Jew, no Queen Esther, you got the enemy in your bed, it's on, no. You got to get rid of it. That's what Mordecai said. They're going to kill you too, girl. He don't, he don't like you more than he like himself. Did y'all hear what I just said? He don't like you more than he likes himself. Skin for skin. The devil right. Yeah, all the man had. He'll give it up. 
save itself. But when it comes to selling out God, the righteous say, no, no, we're not doing that one. See, the righteous are different. So Mordecai, no, man, that dude not right. He will dime you out. You'll be out of that. And you'll be in your grave early. So, what happens? It says, uh, verse 14, For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this time, then shall there an enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. It says, somebody else is going to deliver them. It's going to happen. They're going to be delivered. But thou and thy father's house should be destroyed. Say, you, you're going to die. He's telling her, Look, if you don't, now, now we got to catch this, sisters. If you don't do your part to talk to brother about what should be done at the appropriate time with scripture, this is you. See, this is, this is what is for our learning. Romans 15, 1. See, 15, 1 through 3, forgive me. You have to understand, if you don't do your post, what you're supposed to do in the kingdom, Somebody else is going to do it, but you're going to be destroyed. Why is that? Because God said, you ain't, you ain't do what I asked you. What, what do I need you for? I gave you life. I promise you heaven. <laughs> I mean, you got me, the Lord is saying of himself. You're not going to do what I told you to do? You're not going to, you see the church is going out. That letter that came to Ephesus, the sisters look around. Y'all not going to do what he say in the right setting? You get destroyed. You didn't know that? Did we think God was going to act us, let us in for being bench warmers? Oh, come on, brother. This has to be taught. He says, why would he destroy? Because you didn't do it. The Jews going to get delivered, but he's going to make sure, you know, else I ask to do this, but I'm going to let them kill you. You know how many women God let get killed? And women were killed all the time. All the time. Yeah, all the time. Children were taken with them. They were Jews, too. And children were killed. Slayed. Saul. Dawn, Michelle, that disrespected David. She raised five children of one of her relatives because David would not let her have children. She didn't have children with the other man that Saul gave her to. And when it came time for Saul to pay back for his sins through his family and the famine, because they were evil too, David got all five of her children and had them killed at the hands of of the Gibeonites. We talked about that, brethren. Do y'all think these stars? No, you don't just being facetious. You think these stars are here because of good reading, warm fireplace, and hot cocoa? No. These are instructions and warning. Do our jobs. With scripture, not what you think it should be, what the Bible has said to do. Because he said, You're going to die. And that's, that's his daughter. That's like his daughter. It's a niece. So he knows. He's speaking for God. You're going to die. You and your father. How's the father I was going to die? Whatever associated with you. There'll be no members of you. you know, I'm the one raised you. So if you don't have no kids, no connection, y'all y'all gone. You think you're not going to kill the seed? If her and the man have baby, he'll say, they're crooked too. Whatever is a vesta. That's what he's saying. Listen. How will you be destroyed? Your children could rise up against you. People think because there are certain ages that everything's okay. Y'all know children become grown and you get old, right? And you know, I mean old. Old, old. 75, 80, old. 82, 83, 84. Now that knee don't work no more. You know, you tell you, no, I just want y'all to take me to the grocery store. I got my own family, mama. I got my own family. I see, now it hits you. Oh, the Lord, be, yeah, I, I hope it's that the Lord be with you. And not that you didn't do your job when you had good, strong cartilage in your knee. Now you can't get to the store. You can call Uber, eventually, you know, Uber, Uber don't run for free. You better have a deep pockets. They're not coming for free, you can guarantee that. You have to understand, things can get hard on you. They left you with the grandbabies. I haven't seen her in a month. I call her, she don't pick up her cell phone. I know, I know she's still working because it's a different message going, yeah, that's right. You just became mama to her three kids. That's the way it is. Did you do, did not, that may be a joy to you, but it may be a sorrow if you're not prepared. It may be a punishment. Maybe a punishment. You can't tell. So that's why you have to understand. Don't let the devil destroy you by not doing Make sure you can look back and say, okay, they done me wrong. Doing like this, but I can look back. I did what I was supposed to do, and then you're okay. 
And who knoweth whether thou art come to the king for such a time as this? Now, you don't think women are important? Mordecai says, now this is something we don't know. He says, you know, this might be why the Lord lets you fall into, I mean, out of all the women of Israel, he like you. It's a lot of pretty, a lot of pretty, 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 pretty women of Israel. The Lord said, and no daughters or sons like Israelites. So you just one of many pretty. Even the girls in the Song of Solomon said he got a lot of women, but I'm his number one. And she was right. Solomon had a lot of women. So I'm saying out of, even just out of Solomon's thousand, not just a thousand women that he had just for him. So he said, how do you know that he didn't pick you for that? How do you know God didn't select you to be one who will speak up for the children of God, for the saints at the kingdom that you are worshiping at that particular congregation? And so therefore, he says here that uh, then Esther bade them to return Mordecai this answer. Go gather up all the Jews that are present in Shushan and fast ye for me. Oh, now she get it. She got it. She got, is she being a leader? No. She's saying, okay, for this to work for us, because I'm the one I got to step to the court. Now, remember, I got to go unannounced. I need y'all to be in fasting and prayer for me. Because if I step on that concrete, and old boy don't recognize me, and the, and the archers don't see the signal, shish kebab time. You're out. And what was the queen? Well, she should have said that. Oh, my heart. Now, I'm going to wear sackcloth, and I'm not. But you dead. So he says, uh, fast with me, either, neither eat nor drink. Wow, no water either. Three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise. And so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. This is a law, down, man. Now, now let's see, that's not the law of Moses. That's the law of the Medo Persians. That's their law. And if I perish, I perish. Now, now you go, sister. There you go, sister. So that's the way to be. You know, y'all fast. Nobody going to eat. Nobody going to drink. Me and my girls. If I go, I get dropped, I drop. That's the way it is. Because she knows if I don't, he already told me God going to destroy me anyway. Wow, what a choice to have, dear sisters of God. You lose either way. But how do you know you're guaranteed win. You lose your life either way. If you don't, you could die. If you go before the king, you could die. If you go before the brother, he could destroy your name. Every time I come for a sister so and so was wondering, could we uh, get some funds together? Because, you know, they want to get the ladies they program together. Uh, I've been thinking, I think we should pick someone else other than her. He already got him in his pocket because he know all his dirt and he'll sing like a bird on him. So he goes, Oh, may I ask why? Well, I, mean, I just think some people, you know, ruffle the church more than should be as a bird's feathers. You'll say something cute like that and you'll go, okay, brother. Okay. Okay, massa. Might as well do that. Okay, massa. Mm. I'm going to do that. Yeah, because you, he's your king. See, so he starts to attack. He starts to attack. See, that's how you're destroyed. Bad mouth you. You know, bad mouth you. We want to get her to do this position. Are there any others? That's all they need to say. He don't even say nothing. He don't even sound like it. Are there any others? You know? Here come. The signal sent. He doesn't want her. See, when you get a king, once he get rolling, it's a snowball. You can't stop him. He gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And he starts having sticks and tree limbs and chicken legs and everything else coming out of the snowball as he rolling down. Whatever's in the way gets picked up. But you have to understand that. You don't need no king but Jesus. So he says here, so Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther commanded. Watch this. Don't get this nervous. The word command means instruction. Because he said, you inside. What do we need to do to support you in this movement? Okay, just pray for me and fast. And I'm going to have to step up. I'm the only one who can do it. If there's any hope of not getting stuck with a spear, it'll be because he likes me. You know the rest of the story. When he saw us, he stuck it out. Oh, girl, you know, man, we can split this kingdom. How much you want of it? That's how he was with her. He didn't call for her, but she could pop up. She found out I can pop up when I want because I'm his number one. And that's what Mark I was saying. How you know God didn't position? Because God already knew Hammond was going to make a move on the Jew. So, you know, I got to have somebody inside. So you say, why didn't God just turn... The king's heart. 
it doesn't work like that, my brethren. If God says it's going to be because this sister is going to tell her husband something. And it's going to shake him to his core. And he's going to quit acting a fool among the saints. He's going to have that sister in position to do that. You won't know what's going on. She'll look like nothing on nobody. And she'll rescue. That's what it's about. So you have to move, sisters. You have to move on. The portion given unto you, just like the men have to do, in order to get the leader to do the right thing. That's the thought on that. Let's get Barak. Uh, Judges chapter 4. All right. Almost done. Winding up. Judges chapter 4. Barak is a great man, a soldier, a general. But he's afraid, like a lot of great men are. They are afraid of what can happen, what can go wrong, destruction, injustice. Judges 4 and 1, and the children of Israel again did even inside the Lord when Ehud was there. Did you notice? I remember Keith taught a lesson, went all through Judges with us. And, and Israel sinned again. And then the Lord lifted up another judge. I remember that. I'll never forget that lesson. And you notice every time somebody got to step up, somebody has done something dumb. Did you notice that? The Lord just doesn't start saying, I, I think I'm going to stir up some mess. No. We do it. We do it. We're the ones. We get in works that are not of God. And then now you got to get somebody to step up and the Lord, God bless him. He has to not only get it going, then he's got to go to a Moses, to an Esther. He's got to go to a Gideon and an Isaiah and wrestle with him. He just can't go, hey, go take care of that for me. You know, hey, you didn't hear me? Go take it. Even in the New Testament. Yes. Somebody got to go talk to Paul. Goes to Ananias. He's scared. But Lord, I have heard many things like Jesus didn't hear. You thought it was only in the Old Testament? No. Like, like he got to tell the Lord. Lord, have you not, do you know, you don't know who Paul is? <sighs> Did you see how Jesus handles it? And asks, go, for I've chosen him. He's just like his father. Go in that might, I've sent thee. I know I chose you. Jesus, same way. He's not weak. Then somebody said, well, you need his son. He's not strong as that man. Please, Jesus will slice you like sausage. Go! I've chosen him. That's it. Now, you don't move then. There'll be a story, another story. There'll be another story about Ananias. We have to understand, saints, is that can we just make a commitment to Christ all over the world? Saints. Let's not make his job any harder than we already made it. Good. When it's time to work, please, let's go to work. Good. Taking away all the excuses, the shreddings, the pieces, the clothing, the sackcloth. Let's go to work and do the work. And God will be with us. Judges 4 and 2. And the Lord sold them into the hand of the king Jab. You see what he does? Now what did the Lord do? He bought us. Acts chapter 20. Bought us. How did he buy us? By sending Christ to die. Christ purchased with his own blood. Sent his son to buy us back. This time, I'm selling you out. Because you're no good. I'm going to sell. So, do you not know the Lord has control of us? Just like I got this Bible. I got control of us. Okay, alright. This church of Christ on whatever street. I'm going to sell y'all to the devil. Hey, yo, you can. I got a cut right there. I got another two for one. You can have both of them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He'll sell you individually, too. I've got two. I've got the husband and the wife. Special sale today. You can have them both. And let you get trouble till you get right. Or till you just get destroyed. So it says, King of Canaan, that reigned in Hazor, the captain of, whose host was Sisera, which dwelt in Harasheth of the Gentiles. Now see, you know, Sisera is just a flunky captain. Jabin is the boy. He, the one got, the, he got the juice, the power, like they say. Sisera is just his boy. He's sitting there. Go, go have him for me. 
And the children of Israel are crying to the Lord, for he had 900 chariots of us. God, do you know how you know what? That's like having 900 Humvees. You know what a Humvee yeah. is? 900 Humvees. <laughs> 900. Not 9, 900. And 20 years he mighty oppressed the children of Israel, running over them. Chariots, running over legs, breaking old folks' legs. Rah! But they're cutting up children, slinging babies under the wheels. Yes, yes, yes. The Bible talked about the carnage. So he says, and there was a prophetess. Yes, right. She was a prophetess. Don't try to fix that. Don't try to adjust it. She was a prophetess. One thing you'll never see of the prophetesses, though, there's no book written by them. Y'all know this? Did y'all know? You see, there's a separation. There's a difference. There's a difference. There's a difference. You don't see miracles done by them either, do you? You see the difference. The Lord showing separation. Women teach. Women teach about God all the time. It does not make them a leader in the church. Amen. That's why that's that's just like that's like giving the candy, baby. That's taking candy from that's too easy to miss. So he says here, as the right of judges helps us understand, and she judged Israel at that time. What does a judge do? She's not a king. You don't have a king. Every man has done what he thinks is right. I'm not saying God has a judge. A judge. What does a judge do? They tell you, you know, well, you're right or wrong. Women judge right now. You can go tell us, you know, I'm thinking about doing this. She said, no, nah, brother, that's not going to work for you. God's not going to be with you in that. That's, that's what Deborah did. Sister, come to you. Brother, I haven't seen you at church in about three months. You know, and uh, then you came right on in and, you preach today. Where you been? Well, you know, the brethren don't have a problem with it. I know, but God got a problem with it. And God got a problem with this whole leadership in addition to that, just to let you know. But that's another stuff. I'm just asking where you been, brother. I'm concerned about you. Well, you know, when you become an elder, deacon, or evangelist, I'll tell you where I've been. Okay. You're cursed. Yeah, you're going to walk away. You, they let you preach all day. That's fine. I'm just asking you where you been, you know. You couldn't answer. You answer God at the judgment, though, when he tell you where you're going. So he know where you've been, but he's going to tell you where you're going. Amen. So he says here, uh, she dwelt on the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel and Mount Ephraim. And the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. And she sent and called Barak, the son of Abinoam, out of Kadesh. So she called her, you know, you know, hey man, tell Barak, come on and talk to him. Uh, in Kadesh, Naphtali, and said to him, have not the Lord God of Israel commanded, saying, go and draw toward Mount Tabor and take with thee 10,000 men of the children of Naphtali and of the children of Zebulun. I thought the Lord told you to go do this, you know. You know. And I will draw unto thee to the river Kishon, Sisera, the captain of Jabin's army, with his chariots and his multitude, and I will deliver him into thine hand. And Barak said unto her, If thou wilt go with me, then I will go. But if thou will not go with me, then I will not go. So he's afraid. You know, and the brother may tell you, you know, you know, you say, you know, brother, you think you make a good elder, good deacon. You know, brother, you think, you know, uh, you should have spoke out when that brother said that in the class. You know, you usually on that, did you even hear? You know, you're like, you know, man, I would, you know, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to the leads about it, but, you know, uh, it'd be good if you came with me. You know, now you, this way you don't go. Won't you take your wife? If, if, he, if he thought that, he would have took her, wouldn't he? Did y'all hear what I just said? If he thought that, he would have took her, wouldn't he? So, go with him. You're not his woman. You're like Deborah. You're going, you know, you know saying, you know, you're going, you know, hey, we want to talk you about this. You know, somebody asked me, you know, why, why is Sister Deborah here? Well, you know, she's just here to support, you know. Brother, you need support? Yeah. It's like Barack needs support. There go your scripture. Amen. You know. And he's done. Now, now, let him say something against the Bible and watch his life fall before you. Let him say something against the Bible. How God do a thing. God don't have no problem with Deborah. Well, she's not going to battle. And Deborah slayed me. She ain't going to battle. She went to support. You know, it's sad that we're supposed to be the teachers of the world. And some of us don't even know of these stories. Even as leaders. We don't know how to counsel and separate and tell a person, Hey man, you know, you can do this. Yes, yeah, sister, you know, you were right for going and saying that. You know, that's what gets you sent in the wrong direction at the judgment, right? Because as an instructor, you're supposed to know that. Especially as an evangelist. You're supposed to know how to set things and all. And if you don't, something is wrong with you. And if someone can't tell you, hey man, this is out of order, and you get all flustered of it, then something is really wrong with you. 
But they love to have it so, God said. Of people. He said, my people like it like that. Yes, they do. But that's why so many die lost. Nevertheless, he says, uh, uh, verse 8, Barak, uh, verse 9, and she said, I will surely go with thee, notwithstanding, the journey that thou takest shall not be for thine honor. For the Lord shall sell Sisera into the hand of a woman. And Deborah rose and went with Barak to Gadash. So he let her know, you know, you're not going to kill him. A woman going to take care of him. And Barak caused Zebulun and Naphtali to Kadesh, and he went up with 10,000 men at his feet, and Deborah went up with him. So he won the battle, but here's the thing. Uh, another woman is going to actually get rid of Sisera, but he has to destroy the army. So the guy's going to flee, the woman's going to invite him in, give him some warm milk, put him in the bed, put a rug over his head to hide him, and put a nail in his temple. Amen. And so that's what she's talking about. So nevertheless, you see people working there. You see the woman going to put him away. The other woman, not look at the beauty. Now watch this, watch this, watch this. So you the sister go with the brother. The brother encourages the saint. And then another sister put a nail on the head of the bad, bad saint that's trying to tear up the church. Wow, did y'all catch that last part? Another sister get in. Yeah, yeah. Because she going to come up in the general meeting and say, I thought the Bible said blah, 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 blah. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Oh, that's right. We need to set him down then. He's the problem. You know what kind of congregation will do that? The right kind. The one that the name Church of Christ is in their heart and not just on the sign outside. Listen, saints of God, you have to understand there are many stories. Elijah's another story. Look at yourself. I can name many. 1 Kings 19, 1 through 9. Elijah wants to hide out. Things got bad. He's running from a woman. Elijah is running from a woman. So what if a brother came up and did tell you that? What if a brother tell you? <laughs> I'm going to pull a few scriptures out there. You can read the rest. 1 Kings 19. What if a brother told you, but I'm scared of sister so and so. 1 Kings 19. Yeah, we're going to have to touch it because I see we're going to have to touch this. Yeah, because somebody said, oh, Zanzi making up. So, no, I'm not. 1 Kings 19. Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and with all how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a message unto Elijah. She sent a message. I'm sending a guy. Come tell you. So let the gods do to me like you killed them and more also if I make not thy life as a life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. Message sent. It's like on a computer. Sin. I'm killing you like you kill them. Same time tomorrow. And so, what does he do? And when he saw that, when he saw the email, look out, he rose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belonged to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey to the wilderness. Just like you go to Dallas and hide out and came and sat down on the juniper tree and requested for himself that he might die. He said, it is enough now. Oh Lord, take away my life for I am not better than my father. I just rather go and die. Doesn't that sound so, doesn't that, now watch this, doesn't that sound noble? So you go to the brother, brother, you know, you should be the, man, look, I've asked God to just take my life. I'm not worthy. I'm just not worthy to leave. You know, now he ready to give up. I was just breaking it down for real. He's asking to die. He wants to die. Doesn't that sound noble? He's a great man. No, he not. No, he's a scary man. Now you got to help him. He slept on the juniper tree. Behold, an angel touched him and said, Arise and eat. And he looked and behold, there was a cake baking on the coals and a cruise of water in his head. And he did eat and drink and laid him down again. It's time to feed him. Give him some scriptures and give him spirit. Give him back to spirit. Let him drink. So you got this? You understand it, bro? The angel came again the second time. And told him, if he didn't get you that first time, come back to him again. Say, bro, I want to tell you about this part too. Touch him and said, Arise and eat because the journey is too great for thee. And he rose and did eat and drink and went to the strength of meat 40 days and 40 nights in the horror of the mouth of God. And he came thither the gave and lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. And he said to him, What doest thou here, Elijah? So he went to the cave, you know. Now, you would think God would go, okay, I want you to do. The Lord is saying, what are you doing hiding in this cave anyway? What are you here for? Did I tell you to go hide in the cave? So you have to tell the brother, you know what I'm saying? You, know, you got to go get the brother and say, brother, you know, why are you, why are you hiding away? Rise up. Do this. 
You can. And he said, I've been very just for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel. Have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altar, and slain thy prophet with the sword. I even I own him left, and they seek my life to take it. And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount of the Lord. Behold, the Lord passed by, and a great strong wind rent the mountains, and breaking in pieces the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. See, the rocks, but you think of something magic, something big will happen, something big gonna happen. Something big gonna happen in my life. Maybe I'll almost die and then I'll be rescued. And that don't mean the law won't you. No, the law says, I'm not, I'm not talking to you now. He wasn't in the wind. He wasn't in the earthquake that came after. For the law was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, a fire wasn't in a fire. You're looking for something great. You're looking for something magnificent to happen. It's not. And after the fire, still small voice. This is still small voice, the word of God. It's, it's what you already are going to talk to you just like a person. Hey, stand up. Do this. I got something for you to do. The Lord says in verse 15, Go return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus, and when thou comest unto Hazel, anoint him to be king of Syria. See, he has to have three governments to destroy evil people. It's always been that way. Outside government. Police. Bring them in. That's what Hazel represents. It's Syria. They will come in and whoop Israel good. Jehu the son of Nish shall thou not to be king of Israel. The leader in the church. There he is right there. Elisha the son of Shaphat of Abel Meloha. Thou will not to be prop in our room. You know you need a replacement too for you. Yeah, go to work man. You still got things to do. You still got things. Sometimes you got to tell the police home. It's a saints and rob the bank. You got to tell the police. He robbed the bank, shot the roof. You got to tell the police, sorry, he went past what we do here in the church. Man, you killed two or three people. You got to go to jail, man. Sorry. You know, something you got to tell the leader in the church, the family member in the home. You got to talk to whoever can help. Depends on the problem. But you got to still keep working. The lodges of the world cannot run away. And what does he do? It came to pass that. He says, him that escaped the sword of Hazel shall Jehu slay. And him that escaped the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. He points out, oh, you know, Hazel, they go, oh, all yeah. Look, if you can't get Hamlet in your house by your parents, bring him to the church. If the church can't handle him, bring him to the jailhouse. That's exactly what he did. If you get beat down in jail, oh, well. Because you should have listened. But if you make it out of that, you need to run into the church and make sure when his service is ready for compare. I am back with God. I have been disciplined and stand firm because this is what we're about in the church. Rescuing souls. Rescuing souls, brother. Because you can't go to the courthouse. You can't go to the police. When it's time to come to law, you got to come back to the church. Sometimes you can't even go to your family because they've left the church. Got to come back to the church. It's Mount Zion. Let us go. And he will teach us of his way. Brethren, I just want to encourage you. Men and women. Let's do the work that we have to do. It's before us. This is how you tie the stories together. There's no, there's no taking out of context. These number of people. You know all these people we talk about? All of them are dead and dust right now. They're all dead and dust. Elijah. He's the exceptional. He's not dust in the sense of his body was not there. But he is not in his body anymore. And he is not alive like Christ in heaven. Because he has yet to resurrect. Let's remember that and understand. Not tasting death and being separated from the body and not alive as Christ is in heaven, it's still, you're dead, you're separated. All else, Elijah's not going to get resurrected? Of course he's got to get resurrected. So that's what means he's dead. He did not taste of death like you and I may, because Jesus could come back before you and I die. So you have to always put handles on what you're talking about, because you have to help people understand, they have a good understanding. You know, do you know anybody can understand what I just said? Anybody can understand. Haziel knew that it was unusual for Elisha, because that's who actually anoints him, not Elijah. He leaves before. He doesn't use my father. Why would you think I would do this? 
He understood the words. Oh, I know what you're going to do to Israel. He understood what he was saying. People act like the nomination people can't understand. Man, they understand. They're not morons. You just think they don't understand because you're afraid to tell them what God said. Because maybe you don't understand what God said. And that's why we ain't helping. God bless you. If you're not a member of the church, you got to get baptized. There's no way out. If you've been baptized into the denomination of the church, what is that? Baptist, Catholic, Methodist, Muslims, Buddha, Hindus. You got to be baptized again. Acts 19, 1 through 5 is clear. You have to be told the truth by one who has the Spirit of God, and then they will baptize you. Their job is to tell, yours is to obey. And then you're safe, and you weren't safe before. Only then. We believe that. Jesus said he died, he buried, he resurrected, he spoke it in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, through the voice of the writer Paul. And in Mark 16, 16, before that's even allowed to be done, he says, He that believes and is baptized shall be saved, he that believes not shall be down. So what has Peter to do in Acts? He has to teach the truth. He's asking in verse 37 of Acts chapter 2. Men and brethren, what shall we do? He responds, repent and be baptized, verse 38. Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. For what? For the remission of sin. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise. So it's a promise unto you and to your children. All that are far. Even as many as the Lord our God shall call. So it still should be taught today by everybody in Christ. Be a truthful teacher. And in other words did he testify and encourage them. Save yourself. Which means they were lost. So what does baptism do? Another point. It saves from this unto wall. Which means the whole generation of man is crooked. Then they glad to receive his word were baptized the same day. 3,000 souls were added unto them. What they continue in the apostles' doctrine. That's what we have to continue in the day. The fellowship is to walk in the light as Christ is in the light. You can find that in 1 John chapter 1. The breaking of bread, which is the meal, Acts 27. And prayers. 1 Thessalonians 5. Pray without ceasing. That's what we have to do. You want something to happen great in your life? Start with prayer. You believe that. The eunuch wants to get baptized, but Philip knows you're not ready. Acts chapter 8. What did he me to be saved? He says, here's why. He says, if you believe with all your heart, you may. He says, I believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Then he baptizes him. So that's what he has to say. Then they rejoice. 1 Corinthians 12, 13. Paul says, for by one spirit are we all baptized. Anyone one body, whether Jew or Gentile, bond or friend, have all been made to drink into one spirit. If you believe that, God will be with you mightily. You will go in his mind. You will accomplish all that he has before you. If you accept that, embrace it, everything is under Jesus Christ's feet. Baptism saves. He said the life figure wants to even baptism is also now save us. 1 Peter 3, 21, 20, the like figure. Not the putting away the filth of the flesh. We know it's not the water. You don't have to get into a debate over that. But it's your answer of a good conscience toward God. How is it empowered by the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Do you still believe that? And where is he at? At the right hand of God. All things, principalities, powers, that's subject to him. And he said, Revelation 2.10, be faithful unto death. What's going to happen to make us have to be that way? He said, behold, the devil shall cast some, not everybody, some saints, not all saints, in the prison. He said, you have tribulation ten days, but you got to be faithful to death. Listen, if you're waiting for somebody, just somebody only, to try and be there for you, you're wasting your time. Christ is already there for you. You have to take the encouragement of the word of God and embrace it in your heart. And someone will come and say, listen, we're going to help you. It's time to move forward. If you're looking for people to stand in line with a ticket, I want to be the next one to encourage you. You're wasting time. It's not going to happen. Move quickly, as the Lord said, while there's still time. Hold fast to that which remains. While it remains. That's what you have to do. If you're here, you need to be baptized. Stay standing with you. Now, if you're here, though, you need to repent. Don't play games. Nobody's going to judge you. Because we've all been judged and condemned to hell and been lifted up by the Lord. So, therefore, if you need prayer, come now together. We stand and sing heaven's invitation. And tenderly, Jesus is calling. For you and for me. See all the portals he's waiting and watching, watching for you and for me. Come home, come home, ye who are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, 
Jesus is all.